and welcome to Tina's Kitchen. I'm glad you all could make it because we are going to make some yummy molasses crinkles today. Now, if you will all just follow me over to my mobile screen, I will tell you what you will need to make these scrumptious cookies. Let's take a look. You will need flour, one egg, a spoon for mixing, a spatula, a measuring spoon, shortening, a cookie scoop, or if you don't have a scoop, two teaspoons will work just as well. Molasses, um, I use the dark molasses, brown sugar, baking soda, ground cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and also a small bowl uh, with about a cup of white sugar in it. Uh, and don't forget your mixing bowl and your cookie sheet. Now, don't you worry if you didn't get all that. I will have a list and the recipe for you at the end of the show. So let's move right along. Now we will be mixing everything together. First of all, you are going to add the brown sugar. You want to make sure that it is very tightly in your measuring cup. To that, add your shortening and mix, mix, mix. This may seem very time consuming, but you want to keep mixing until you get a creamy consistency. While we are waiting, I have a cooking tip for you. Did you know that if you put a slice of bread in with your cookies, they will stay soft and not get hard and crunchy? I think we have time for one more tip. Whenever you empty a jar of dill pickles, save the juice to clean the copper bottoms of your pan. Pour the juice in a large bowl and set the pan in it for 15 minutes. It will come out looking brand new. Next, you want to add the molasses. I prefer the dark molasses. I think it has more flavor and gives the cookie a little more kick. The molasses will be very thick and it really sticks to the inside of your measuring cup. So you will want to use your spatula to scrape the inside of your cup to make sure that you get every last bit of this yummy liquid. How about another tip? Poke a hole in the center of your hamburger patties when making them. They will cook faster and the hole will disappear when they are done. Next comes the egg. You can use organic, free range, or store bought. But the fresh, freshest egg that you can get, the better. I always crack my egg in a separate bowl. That way, if I happen to get a bad egg, <laughs> a bad egg, um, or a piece of broken shell, it's easy to take care of. Again, you really want to mix all the ingredients you have in your bowl very well. It is very important so that you have the right flavor for all of your cookies. Then you need to add your flour. Drop this in very carefully or you will have a big old floury mess all over you. <laughs> now we are getting close to the end. You want to add two teaspoons of the baking soda. You want to make sure that these are level teaspoons. You don't want heaping teaspoons. That would be way too much soda in your recipe. Now, grab your ground cinnamon and measure out one teaspoon and add that to the mix. Again, these are all level teaspoons and not heaping. The final two ingredients are ground ginger and ground cloves. Adding one teaspoon of the ginger and a half teaspoon of the cloves. You want to make sure that your spices are fresh. 
If you have some that have been in your cupboard for five years or so, they will lose a lot of their flavor. Now you want to mix this really well. It is going to be a little crumbly, but when you are through mixing, it should be able to form a nice ball in your hand. How about another tip? Did you know that marshmallows won't dry out when they're frozen? Now, take that cookie scoop or your teaspoon and form small balls with the batter. Roll them in the bowl of white sugar and place them on your cookie sheet. They don't have to be too far apart as they don't spread too much when cooking. Once you get your cookie sheet filled with the sugared balls of molasses batter, put them in your 375 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. They will be ready to come out of the oven when the tops just start to split. Phew! Now we get to sit back for a minute and let them cook. And here they are. Boy, do they smell and look good. You want to take them off of the cookie sheet right away and either put them on a cooling rack or onto a plate. These are your molasses crinkles. They are so yummy. Well, that is it for today. I hope you all had a great time with me in the kitchen. I know I did. Don't forget to copy down and try this recipe. I know you will find it as delicious as I do. Have a blessed day, all.